we got two o'clock, so we'll just give it a moment here. I'm going to be sharing my screen, and we're going to be using our new app today. So the way we're going to structure this class, for those of you on the call and those of you who are going to be joining us on live stream, is I'm going to show you how the app works first, how to use it, and how to share it, and then we're going to go into command to actually do the um, editing of setting up the website or the app, sorry, the app, in case you hadn't set up the app yet. So I'm going to start by actually sharing my phone. So I'm going to click share here. We're going to airplay this over and I'm going to share my smartphone with you. Okay. All right. So you guys are seeing my smartphone. This is actually my phone. And what I want to make sure we do today is make sure you download the KW app. So if you haven't done it yet, You'll want to download the KW app. It'll look like this. And the first time you log into it, it says this. Signing up or logging in lets you save your searches. Now, here's the trick. A lot of you are going to try to sign in and say log in and try your KW email address and password. You don't have a login for this because it's the consumer app. So you, to actually create an account, need to say sign up for an account. So if you haven't done that yet, you guys can do that now. I already did one, but if you hit sign up just so you see what it looks like, it's just asking for their first and last name, an email address they want to use, and then a password. And when they do this, that person, including yourself, would show up in command as a new lead. This is why we want to focus on this because this allows you to be the Amazon of the story, meaning we're going to pay attention to what are they looking at, when did they log into the app, and everything that they do. So you'll want to sign up first. And once you have an account like I do, I'm gonna log into my account. So if you're using the app without logging in, I'll warn you right now, it's not gonna share properly. So if I log out of this really quick, I'll show you log out. It will let me use the app, but it will say the word you in the lower right hand corner. Because it's not logged into me and under me, when I hit the share app button, it may not share with people. So the number one complaint I hear from agents is I shared my app and it's asking them who is their agent. That's because you didn't log in and sign up for an account. So I just want to preface that, that you're going to want to log in, sign up for an account, which I've done already. And then you'll know it's signed in because it won't say the word you anymore in the corner. It'll actually say, well, say you, but it'll have your initials. So my initials mean it's logged in as me, Jay, the buyer, testing out the app or the client in essence. And this will now show me your agent is Jay Cermak. If for some reason it's not listed as you, you can actually search for an agent and look up anybody. So I can look up Luz Gonzalez if I wanted to, right? It's my ability to look up any agent within Keller Williams. And if I wanted to make that my agent, I can click here, hit the get in touch button and it will switch the app over to me. Now, clearly you're only gonna do this for yourself. I'm just showing you that if it's not showing you under your agent, under the U tab, make sure that this is showing you first. Because if I can do that first, then when I hit the share app button, it will send it to me. And here will be the link with my app on it. And I can share it with all my friends on Facebook, email, messaging. This is how you keep the branding to you. So if anyone's had issues with branding, most likely that's why. Uh, you'll be good then, Stacy. If it has the initials next to the U, then that's correct. That's what you want to see. So it should have your initials there. If they're missing and it's just a shape of a person, that means you're not logged in. All right, so why the heck does this app matter? What does this app do? So let's explore what it can do, and then I'll show you how to actually set it up because I think we have a powerful tool that we probably don't understand yet. We jokingly say it's like giving you the keys to the Ferrari before you know how to drive, All right? We wouldn't want to do that. So what I want to help you with is, okay, here is the app today, and the way the app working, um, Barbara, the, the Kelly app still works, but it's eventually going to be replaced. This app is for consumers. So this app is for you to use with your consumers. And that's what we're teaching today. Now, when you open this app, sometimes it's kind of near your location, but a lot of times people tell me the location's off. It didn't automatically show me the right space. Here's why that happens is because they have to click the little arrow in the upper right hand corner. It looks like a little uh, arrow. When I click it, it centers my map. By the way, I tested out every real estate app out there. They all do the same thing. They start with a map kind of close to you, but they never start with your exact house. You always have to come to this arrow and click here. So in case any of you are, are worried about that as a feature, that's how they all work. 
And a good example of that, I'm going to use Zillow's app because I think if I show you what our app does versus Zillow, a lot of this might make more sense. So Zillow's app is opening, but see how it's a general area right now? It didn't automatically take me to my location. So in Zillow's app, I also have to click the little arrow to center the map to where I live. So I'm only pointing that out so that you know that's a similarity, that all apps do that. So that's one of the first things. Uh, now, in my location, the first thing you'll notice differently about our app versus any other app is you start seeing some neighborhood names. Like here's Imperial Point and Knoll Ridge. Technically, I'm on the line where Knoll Ridge is my neighborhood, but I'm really close to Imperial Point, so I can target to either of these neighborhoods, and they would understand that I live in the area. That's just an example. The point is the blue lines are the neighborhood map. Now, a lot of you ask me, what happens if the map is wrong? Well, the map itself came from Nextdoor. So if you haven't heard of Nextdoor, it's the social media online um, home neighborhood social media channel. And the neighbors specifically drew a map and actually gave it a name. And they didn't verify with the state. They didn't verify with the realtor. They just said, here's what we think it is. And people voted for it. The reason I'm mentioning that is just tell clients this was what the consumers chose based by next door. All we get from next door is the name of the neighborhood and the blue outline of the shape. That's it. The rest of the data is ours with our own IDX feed and smarter agent. So the rest of these are listings that came in, but what our app does that the others do, it doesn't default to specific properties. So if I clear this all out and reset it because I've used this app before, I'm gonna reset it back to normal. And one thing you're gonna notice is this is Zillow's app. And here's our app. What's one difference you see right away? Neighborhoods. Zillow doesn't have neighborhoods. Zillow can only search by city, state, or zip. Now here's the trick with what Zillow is doing right now. That's everything. Houses, condos, rentals, commercials, just like we're doing, they're showing everything available because they want the consumer to believe there's more properties for sale. So just understand real estate apps in general, best practice is to show you everything for sale and have the consumer click a button and switch it to say, you know what, only show me houses or only show me condos. And the reason I'm explaining that is because I get a lot of feedback from agents telling me this app doesn't work. It doesn't show my location properly because they have to click the arrow. It doesn't show me only single family homes. It's showing me everything for sale because the consumer has to choose it. <laughs> So just understand, we are going head to head with Zillow because Zillow is the number one app in real estate right now. And our goal is to compete against it and eventually outshine them. So that's one thing to point out just in the difference. Now at the top, you've got your search field. So I can also search by an area that I don't know. Now this is where it gets unique. So let's say I was looking in Chicago. I'm from Chicago, but I don't know all the cities in Chicago. So I can go up to Chicago from Florida and look for homes for sale. And here's what's neat. I can do this while I'm in Florida. So you guys, while these people are at home right now, you can start sharing with them that this app can help you anywhere in America. How powerful is that? We're virtually stuck right now in most areas where you can't leave your home, but they still want to look. Here's why that matters. If I started telling somebody, look for a home in Chicago, here are the neighborhoods that you might wanna live in, Here's a neighborhood that might work for you and you can explore this neighborhood. Couldn't I get a referral fee out of that? So I started changing my branding to say, thanks to our app, I can help you find an agent anywhere because the technology will work anywhere. I'm not licensed in Chicago. You're not licensed in Chicago, most likely. Yet I can use this app to say, why don't you go look at this home in Chicago? Is this what you're looking for? Awesome. Do you want to save it as a favorite? Do you want me to contact somebody? And everything they do in this app, by the way, comes to me only. It's not going to call the agent out there. It's not going to call the Keller Williams Chicago office. It's going to say, Jay Cermak, you are their chosen realtor. Let's connect with you and you can help me anywhere. And thanks to our license and referral fees, how powerful is that as a business? So I wanted to point that out. It's just searching by neighborhood. And if you know a neighborhood name, so I already told you I'm next to Imperial Point, I can start typing in the neighborhood name too. This is something the other apps can't do. So if I start typing in Imperial Point, if I can spell it right, and I guess I also spelled the beginning part wrong, Imperial, doo -doo -doo. there you go. It will show me right here, neighborhoods, Imperial Point in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I just jumped from Chicago back to my neighborhood. 
So the reason that's important is because neighborhood search is something these apps can't do. It says the word neighborhood in the search bar. This is Zillow again. I can type in Imperial Point and they might get some of it right. It says Imperial Point, Fort Lauderdale. They have a map drawn, but it's Scott Bayview Club in there. That's not Imperial Point. That's a totally different neighborhood. Because they don't have neighborhoods, they have MLS areas and they're trying to draw it. So that's one big difference between yours and theirs. See, mine has the right neighborhood of Imperial Point. The thing we're seeing here with the neighborhoods that's unique that Zillow doesn't have is neighborhood data. So the big thing is here's the neighborhood of Imperial Point, and then here's where the data starts coming in. So I can see the current statistics of this neighborhood. Now, right now, do you think people are more nervous about real estate or less nervous? More. So what I can do is say, you know what, one of the things I have to keep you informed of the neighborhood is my app. If you download the app and want to study your neighborhood, you'll see specifically what's happening in just your neighborhood. So you can monitor it over time. That's an easy script to say, let me give you this app. It will help you. Now here's the stats about sold data. I can narrow this down and see even more. And then what locals say. Now this is going to be big as far as what areas do I move to? Now I'm in a tropical location. So people moving here don't always know the area. So what a great way to figure out, wow, this is good if you like yoga, We've got athleisure wear, humanitarian focus, fitness oriented, historic. What are those things that I might be looking for when I'm looking for a place? This would be a great way to do that, right? Is to actually use this and have it all, you know, just help clients along the way. So this is a good one for neighborhoods. Then it's got built in commute time. So these are the three market centers that I work out of. Coral Springs, Aventura, and Fort Lauderdale. So I programmed my app to have these locations so every neighborhood and house I look at it's built in the ability to see what's the driving directions biking and walking now only one office I could walk to the rest of these are pretty long biking would be 15 minutes and my fastest drive is the Fort Lauderdale office now here's one trick because agents asked me why doesn't it like take you into your GPS it does if you do commute time so if I were to click on commute times like let's say I was going to Fort Lauderdale if you click the three lines or have your client do it, they can get uh, directions to an address. So the power of this is, hey, Mr. Seller, Mr. Buyer, why you wanna sign up on my app today is so that we can track the places you care about and then I can give you information along the way of how far of a commute would that be? What a great way to collect more addresses, like put in your, your work, your wife's work, the schools your kids go to, where do you like to go hang out? Let's program those addresses and help you find the best location for that. So that's something that's built in. The nearby schools is both public and private. Now this one, the one difference I'm seeing is we have the school ratings where it says public like 65%, but student to teacher ratios, I haven't found that in any of the other apps. So if you wanna know something different about your app, I can tell you that the McNabb Elementary School has for every one teacher, they have 16 students. That might be something people care to know about, but it's more information and if the whole goal is to get more information to the hands of my consumers, I'm going to highlight that. Now, let me preface this for a second. That means if I'm talking about this other app, we don't bad, bad mouth it. Now, I'm informing you so you're informed. But trust me, the clients already see this as a great app. They're not going to listen to you if you say mine's better than Zillow. No. Just tell them I have an app also that can give you information. And if you like it, great. We're working together. And it will allow us to communicate. Let them self-discover these things because if I did the same thing on a home here, there is no neighborhood search. So I have no data here on the neighborhood, but I could come and see a specific home, which we're going to do in a second in the comparison. And I'm only doing this because they will show you some school information. So they have the price history, tax, rentals, and here we go. There's their schools. Notice the difference in their schools. They tell you six out of 10, four out of 10, two out of 10, Ours, on the other hand, shows you the same information, six, four, two, and the student to teacher ratio, which is the difference. So just so you're informed about it, that's one big difference between our app and theirs. Then we have Yelp built in. Only one other app out there in the world has Yelp built in. So now if I don't know the area, now you're telling me what are the grocery stores nearby this neighborhood? Oh, great. There's a great uh, Walmart marketplace nearby and Publix is nearby. Okay, awesome. I love that. What restaurants are nearby? Oh, there's tons. How about nightlife? Great. So now in one app, they're able to learn about a neighborhood they don't know about, 
They're able to find out what people say about living there and what the home market's doing. They're able to see their commute times, the schools, and now you integrated Yelp in here. You guys, the only other app that does the Yelp part is Trulia. Now Trulia is the number two real estate search app and Zillow owns them, but Zillow still hasn't moved over to bringing that data over. So I want you to know, hey, if you don't know an area, this app will help you. By the way, here are homes for sale in that neighborhood. So it would be their ability to use this to find homes if they want to move to a neighborhood. So this is great to explore neighborhoods and it's great to get information about my neighborhood update. So that's why I wanted to highlight neighborhoods because that is one big difference between ours and theirs. By the way, in this whole list, this is all the neighborhood data they have about Imperial Point. Home value, one year prediction, median home price, that's it. That's all they have on neighborhoods versus our app. So that's one big difference. The other thing that's different is just looking at a listing. So let's look at this listing. So this is listed at 599. It's actually listed with Compass. You'll see courtesy of Compass. If I pull up that same listing on their app, let's see if I can find it here. So 599, actually it'd be easier to search by the address. So 2119 Northeast 959. 2119 Northeast. And I would encourage you if you're starting to practice with this, compare our app side by side. So here's what they come up with for that listing. And here's what we're coming up for that listing. So I'm gonna click on it. Now they've got the ability to look at photos, which they love to do. We know that's important. If they click on the photos, by the way, here is the layout of all the photos in one quick view. Knowing that I'm the agent and the consumer on this one, if I hit the heart icon, I'll get the option to say, would you like to save this in your collections? So this is how they save favorites of homes that they like. By the way, you'll be alerted that they liked something. You'll know that they favorited something. So when I get back into command, you're gonna see this. And for this example, I'll do it as my Lauda by the Sea, save it to my collections there. And I just saved a home to my collections, something that I'm looking at. Now, then it's got the information about the home. So here is the price, 599.9, four bedroom, three bath, 2,400 square feet. There's the address. I saved it. By the way, they can sh share this with other people. So I can have them share it with their friends and family, and it will encourage that they download my app versus Zillow's version of that share is going to say download Zillow's app and let me sell it to an agent. Hey, Jay. So that's what they're coming up with. Yeah. The, the, that square footage, is that um, the adjusted square footage or under here? It's the same. Uh, they have it here, 2439. It matches what Zillow has, so I can't tell you 100%. I just know it's whatever they pulled in. Okay. So our square footage matches theirs. Most likely it's whatever was typed in the MLS as the main square footage. So it looks like interior details, see more facts and features, interior livable space, 2439. Okay. So that's where I, our from. I, have, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, and I'm sorry if I, if I missed a step. How, how did you get to the, all that neighborhood information that you were just showing us? Yeah, I actually went and searched the map for neighborhoods. So if you look for neighborhoods and zoom in, any neighborhood that's got a blue outline has a word bubble. And I just clicked that word bubble. Because, for example, I'm looking at um, Hoboken, New Jersey, um, and I clicked on townhomes and condos. So I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how do I pull up information on. Yeah, so I'm I'm in Hoboken right now. What right. neighborhood are you looking at? Oh, okay, like downtown Hoboken. Okay, so I would look here and I don't know where that is, but I'll just pick one of these. So see how the, they've got the blue lines and the yeah. little bubble in the center? That's how I got the neighborhood. If you click like Midtown East, if I click the Midtown East word, that's the neighborhood data. Oh, okay, and got that's it. How they... got it. Okay, got it. Yep. All right, you thank you. It. All right, so I'm gonna come back here. So just looking at the listings though, but you're seeing what we're doing. Basically, we're looking at a listing. Good thing I saved it so I could find it again. Uh, oh wait, that's not the right one. It is, is it? It's right. Um, is also the other cool thing that's about ours, you guys, look at this right here. Save Keller Mortgage. So we built in Keller Mortgage and Keller Covered. So Keller Mortgage, for those who don't know, is our mortgage product. Now, we still have mortgage relationship with lenders, and that's fine. But the big thing to highlight there, see how it says the word save up to $4,700 on your next home? Do you think we'll get more leads or less leads? More. It just means, hey, maybe we might be able to save you money on this home. Would you like to do that? 
Here's what I know though. Right now, mortgage rates are fluctuating and people just want convenience. So if I can find the home, learn about a neighborhood and click one button to apply for a mortgage right from your app, and it's all branded to me, Jay Cermak, the trainer, all in this one thing, why not do that? It's just something to say, hey, you could save money on this if you want. So now I tell them my app can help them save money if they're curious. That's all I say. You're not here to explain what Keller Mortgage is or how it works. You just say, hey, it's here. Now here's something I learned about it that agents didn't know. They do loans for FHA. Um, uh, FHA, they do it for VA loans. So we'll do veteran loans if you have any VAs. It does jumbo loans up to 3 million. So there's a lot of products we do that you need to learn about this product only for the standpoint of if they ask you questions, you can answer it. But if they do that, and I know I can get a loan on a $598,000 home and I can get a mortgage, this is convenience. This is the real estate 2.0. I can find a home on the app. I can finance the home on the app. Plus I can insure the home on the app. Okay, I can't find that on Zillow. Zillow has a mortgage calculator, but here's what Zillow does. It sells it back to you and they give it to their own mortgage company because they own one. They're not going to shop around for the client. Is that best for the client if I don't shop around? Now, I'm not here trying to badmouth Zillow. I'm just comparing what does ours do versus the top in the industry. So Keller Mortgage is here plus Keller Covered. Keller Covered saves them up to 30% on home insurance. It's a home insurance shopping price comparison tool, basically. They can get a quote on this. By the way, these two products only work if you know a KW agent. So nobody outside of Keller Williams can go and say, I want to get a mortgage. They would say, great, who's your agent? If you don't have one, we'll help you. I hit a button again. There you go. Um, so you want to make sure that you're educated about this and just tell them, I've got an app that can save you money on home insurance and on saving a mortgage. And it's built into every listing they look at, by the way. So here's some of the data from the MLS in here. Here's some information about the home. There's that neighborhood again. So I also could come here and explore the neighborhood if I wanted to learn more about this neighborhood specifically. What local say is built in as well. So this is coming from a company called Spatial AI. It basically aggregates artificial intelligence search queries of people living in the area and what people say about it. So that's built into every listing. Walkability score is built into every listing. My commute times are built into every listing. If I save them, the schools again, any upcoming open houses, and oh look, it's the mortgage calculator built in again for Keller Mortgage. So they have a second time to see the ability to save up to $4,700 on a home and save up to 30% on home insurance. So you're giving them this new experience, which I'm, I'm coining real estate 2.0 now. And I honestly will tell you, I'm running ads around the area and targeting my database showing this app. Like my video is me showing how does this work so that consumers can go, whoa, that's different than anything I've seen out there. And I just say it's something where you, you get working with me. Then it's got the public schools we saw, the calculators in here. Eventually, this is gonna be great for my sellers when I can show you how many views, favorites, and hides is it gonna be here for activity. That eventually is gonna to filter to my sellers. Mr. Seller, pull up your listing on my app and you can see in real time how many people are looking at this and who favorited it. Now it's not live yet, but do you see where this would come in handy for a seller? It can be used for them too, because odds are if they're selling their home, they're probably buying somewhere. And we know most consumers just like looking around at homes. So why not do it on your app? Then here are the nearby homes nearby this that they can also look into. And by the way, here's my branding at the bottom. And it says, ask your agent, meaning they're contacting me on every listing in America in this app. So we can get a referral and build a relationship. This allows you to be the real estate agent of the future and help them wherever they are. Okay, great. So I can see neighborhoods. I can learn there. What can I do about searching? So price, you can narrow it down by price. Now it starts at a ridiculously high $20 million, but you can lower it to say, look, maybe I'm looking at a price range of under 400,000. Okay, great. How many bedrooms do you want? This works like any other app. Okay, maybe two bedrooms minimum. What kind of property type? Well, I'm looking for houses. Yeah, that disappeared in my area. We don't have houses in my neighborhood under 400,000, but you see, I could switch it to condo and I would see it or townhomes or multifamily. I'm actually doing a search in the area for multifamily homes. There won't be many under 400,000 though, but at least I can get that idea and then update my budget, rearrange things and it won't like the bedrooms for multifamily. There we go. So I can find what I'm looking for with the search criteria.
Now under more, there's a couple hidden features that I want you to be aware of so that you can educate your consumers and you can practice using this app. The first will be, notice under the filters here, it has map. So you can switch it to a satellite view. This is powerful. If I wanna look in a neighborhood, like here's where that house is, let's zoom in and see what's nearby. Oh look, there's a nice church nearby, that's great. Okay, here's a big school, and I'm just learning about what's nearby at the home, and I can use this GPS. Oh, look, there's a waterway, and then we get to the ocean. That's not far at all. It allows them just to virtually search. So I like the map feature. The other thing under more that you can search by is all the normal filters are here, but the big one that works for me is listing type, because a lot of times people ask, what about rentals? Can I search by rentals? Now, listing type, we did fix this. It is looking for active only now. If you wanted to look for short sales or coming soon or pending or anything, you can change that. But the big one would be rentals. If I come to listing type and switch it to for rent and I come back to my filter, here are all the rentals. I'll get rid of the multifamily. And then now I'm looking at all the rentals in an area. So it is built in. You just have to come to more listing type and switch it to say for rent. So that's a big one agents have asked me about. And Josh team told me today, one of the newest features that's coming is the ability to search by keyword. So soon I'm gonna search by keyword and look up like even a White House. So let's see if it's working yet. White House uh, pool. So I'm gonna search and see if this gives me any results. It says it does. Let's see if any of these homes are, that's white. Yeah, that's a white building. So I guess it is working where it's showing me properties with homes. So the keyword search is the big one that Josh said was coming out this week. So now your clients can search by specific keywords and it will look through every listing in America for that keyword. So I'll do a video on that later, but I just wanted you to be aware that that's another way you can filter by. So practice this, play with this app, see what it can do. Cause if you get more comfortable with it, then you're more comfortable sharing it. And here's what I know. People need this app right now. They want to be updated about what's happening in the market. And you have this tool that no one else has to give them right now. Well, no one else, unless you're with Keller Williams. All right. So let me give you, I got some chats here. Let me see if I'm missing anything in the chat. Okay. How do I return from the map to normal screen again? Oh, okay. Uh, Anna, click back on more map and then just switch it back to default. So if you don't want to be on satellite, you just come back to map and you can switch. Um, the pending status, it depends on the MLS. So the pending status comes from the MLS itself. We mapped every MLS. So if I switch this to pending, let me see what shows up here. And some MLSs may not be mapped all the way, but this is just telling me listings that are now marked as pending according to the filters. All right, so what do I have at the bottom of the screen? So then you've got feed. Now this is the feed to look at stuff. Now there is no feed for me right now, but a feed would be like husband and wife looking at an app. Under the U tab is an option to say co-buyer where you can invite somebody to be a co-buyer on this. So I can invite a co-buyer, remove them, add them, and then they can use their app on their phone. I can use my app on my phone and we can share and collaborate together. That's what starts with the news feed. Eventually, the news feed is going to be like your neighborhood updates or any updates you have for them. The guides, we're going to build this today. And Wednesday, I'm teaching a one-hour class on how to up your game on the buyer's and seller's guide. So this is something unique. Um, Josh team calls this like the uh, Domino's Pizza app. It's basically telling you where are we at in the buying or selling process. So I've got built in the buying and selling process into this app, branded to me, by the way. We're going to set that up when I do the wizard. But buying, what's important is I can start my search. Oh, look, get pre-approved. If they click this, there's Keller Mortgage built into the buyer guide. So it's also built into the buyer guide. You've got the option here also to do home insurance. Same thing, built into the guide. So now you can have confidence that if you use this buying and selling guide, like we make an offer, it's informational. This now just became your digital interactive buying and selling guide on the go. Same thing with selling. Now you'll see mine has a couple of things you don't, yours don't. So Wednesday, I'm gonna teach you how to customize these, but your selling guide starts with showing a home. So they can click on here and it'll give them tips on what is showing and what to do. And then review offers, inspection, appraisal, and close. 
So you're just navigating them through the process and then that way they will know where they're at in the journey. The saved, here's those collections I did. I've got a cousin moving out of state, so I was helping them find some rentals out of state. I've also got my list for multifamily investments. These are what we call my collections. Like what are those homes I wanna see and I'm creating the collection of things I want. And here are my own saved searches. So the client can set up their own safe search. Then the last thing with the app is to go here. Uh, yes, Eli, the old app automatically got updated. So anybody who's using the app today gets the new version instantly. No need to redownload. So I can actually come here to the history. Here's all the properties we looked at recently. I can come here to my account. If the client wants to change anything about them or manage their places, it lives here. And then your agent, this is you. So they can view the agent profile. So here's my information coming from KW Command. They can learn more about me and they can even do the option to refer me to one of the powerful. That's a neat way to say, here's the agent I was telling you about, but they also can share this app with you. And here's what I love about this feature. Sharing the app stays branded to you. So the power of this is gonna be if I share it with my friends or family and they share it with their coworkers and their friends, that person will come into command as a brand new lead. So there's a lot of power in this app and I wanted to spend more time showing you what it can do because the setup really doesn't take long, but you gotta know how the app works to really appreciate it. So afterwards, I'm gonna stay on for 30 minutes at three o'clock for q and I know we lost a little bit of time, but we're still on track. It won't take me more than 20 minutes to set this up. And then we'll ask more questions around the app itself. So I'm gonna stop sharing my phone and I'm gonna go back to sharing my computer screen. So I'm gonna share my desktop and we're gonna go into command this time. So if you're new or never been in command, the website is agent.kdb.com. So we're gonna come in here to my personal account. I will shrink this down a little bit and move my picture over to the right. Perfect. Okay, so this is my command screen. And here what I'm looking at is what's your home screen. Now here's the neat thing. Anybody who signs up on your new app will show up here under recent leads. This is a new widget on the home screen of command. So this is actually somebody I got from a web page I created called a landing page. So Kim is a millennial and I had to download a guide on millennial home ownership. So she registered on my website and I sent her the link today. Here's some from Facebook ads. I've got some from my KW app. So if I keep looking, here's the one from the app and then I will have my own family members in this list that came from Facebook app. So the leads is just your way to see who's new that came into the system. But what we need to do is set up our app. So inside of command on the left-hand side, if you click the KW, you will see the actual tab here and consumer is the tab that we're gonna go to for the mobile app. Now, when I come to the tab for consumer, this used to be called sites. Tomorrow, we're gonna teach you the website. So tomorrow I'll teach you how to come in and build your website. Wednesday, we're gonna teach you how to build your guides. So just know 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow and we're gonna teach the website and 2 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, we're gonna teach you the app, uh, the buyer's and seller's guide. But what I'm gonna do is come here to agent site pages and we're gonna click where it says right here, site and app settings. This is where you set your app and your website up. When I go there, you're gonna see a learn more with Kelly guides. So a Kelly guide is like a wizard to set things up. So we're gonna do the Kelly guide for the consumer settings, which is for the consumer app. This is actually a pretty quick wizard. It does not take long. Um, it'll take you longer tomorrow to do the website. Now, let me preface though, if you haven't done your website yet, this Kelly guide will not work for you. And I'll show you where it stops. So in case anybody's watching this right now and you haven't done the agent website version, I'm gonna teach you to do that tomorrow. Um, but in case that does come up, then you might run into an issue when I do this. So consumer settings, continue. Are you sure you wanna leave? Yes, that's okay. And this is the first part. What should I expect to get out of this guide? You're in what's called a Kelly guide or a wizard. So we're gonna set up your app. We're gonna customize your buying and selling guides. And then we're gonna help you market your app so you can tell people about it. So we're gonna click get started. Now this takes you to the first step is education. Now you're already here learning about this app. So you can spend time to learn about the app, manage your relationships, share the app with people, or you can continue watching. 
So these are really education. It's just teaching you what can my app do. Step two, when I click on step two, is actually gonna be the consumer settings. So the first thing you're gonna build is what we call a landing page, a website that says, if you come here, download my app today. The cool thing about this is it's already built for you. You don't have to build it. You're just gonna give it a title and be done. So you're gonna build the fastest web page in history by clicking where it says app download, click the arrow to the right, and all you have to do is give it a name where it says the hero text. So I just said download my app. It will give you your link for your app. So if you didn't know what the link to your app is, it's right here. And you can even send it to people to text if they want to. Um, I don't like my link because mine is KW2, and that's an I, by the way, not a one. So see how it confuses people? So I've got a separate video on YouTube you can watch on how to mask it with something prettier. So that link, if I go to app.jteamglobal.com, it just forwards you to that link. So I took my website, took a prettier link, and just made it forward over to my website. So I've got a video on how to do that. You'll want something that looks nice on marketing pieces. So that's just an easy way to tell people to go to my app. So if you, you need it, just hit copy. But the only thing required right now is the red asterisk, which is download my app, just type that in. I click save and continue and you just built a web page. Nice and easy, what we call a landing page. Step three of this guide is setting up your guides. So we're gonna set up your buying and selling guides. Now we're doing two of them, one for buyers and then one for sellers. So I'm gonna take you through the setup of this and then I'll show you on Wednesday how you can customize these and add even more stages. All right. Okay, we got that there. Got you, Michelle. Oh yeah, I'll put the link in there. Um, I'll get it from YouTube before we're done, uh, Lynn Ann, and I'll get you the link there for uh, how to, do it from the app. Okay, so in the guide builder, step one is setup. Notice it's got a little arrow. So the first setup is what guide do you wanna build first? So we're building two of these here. We're gonna build the buyer guide and then we're gonna build the seller guide. So let's build the built buyer guide first. So I've got it there and it's hard to see. Let me shrink this down a little. At the bottom of the screen, it's just gonna say the next button. So we're just scrolling down and clicking next. So the first part is what's the welcome to this? So it has something called your timeline guide, which I just left it. I might change it for this one and say your um, buyer timeline guide, because this one's for buyers. It wrote a message for me, but the weird thing about your message, where I wrote our team, yours is gonna say the word Paul, because originally it was our test guy was Paul. So the text might say, congratulations, and then Paul will be providing you with insights in each step. Just change the name Paul, unless your name is Paul. So I changed it in on my case, I wanna talk about our team. So I just said our team will be providing you with insights each step. So I just want it to be the team version. If you are an individual, just say your name. So I might say Eli will be providing insights in each step. So that's all we have to edit. You get up to 400 characters. I personally didn't wanna write any more than this, but if you want to, it's customizable if you want to come back later to do this. When I do the guide on Wednesday, where I teach you how to customize this, we can customize the message that day. For today, just change the name Paul and then click next. Now the first part is it's going to actually show you the current steps. Now the only one that you're seeing right now that I have you don't is called sign by our brokerage agreement. So Wednesday, I'll teach you how to add that, but you should have everything else that's listed here. like. Start with your guide, get pre-approved, tour homes, make an offer. Everything else automatically, automatically was already here. On the right-hand side, you can rearrange the order of these and you can click on any of them if you wanted to spend a moment to re-edit any of these. I would say wait till Wednesday to think about that, but between now and Wednesday, what do you want to tell consumers about working with you to buy a home or sell a home? I would say for today, just keep it simple and just click the next button. But if you needed to customize this view, you can. Um, I did that the first time I did it and there was an extra step later. So wait till Wednesday and I'll teach you how to do the extra step. So just leave it alone and say next. And congratulations, you just built a buyer guide.
So now we're going to do the same process at a guide, but for sellers. You're only allowed to add one of each. Now in the future, you're going to create a different buyer guides too. Like I might have one buyer guide for millennials and a different buyer guide for empty nesters and a different buyer guide for veterans, right? You're going to be able to customize the experience depending on what the person needs. For today, you're just making one buyer, one seller, but start thinking about that between now and when that comes out. I'm actually seeing it in the test environment right now where we're practicing making multiple buyers and seller guides. What would that look like? So maybe I know that someone's being an empty nester. I can apply the empty nester buyer guide, which has different tips and tricks versus the first time home buyer, buyer guide. So we're gonna choose seller guides, click next. Again, your timeline, but for this example, I'm gonna say your selling timeline. Congratulations on starting the process of selling your home, blah, blah, blah. And then it will say in the middle, Paul. <laughs> Uh, yes, Eli, everything we're doing is on the app. These guides are, the, are on the app. So when I was in the app showing you the buying and selling guide, this is where it's coming from. So I'm going to change where it says Paul to our team. You would just change Paul to your name or team. And that's all I changed. I left everything alone. Click next, same process. This one, my first three are different than yours because I added these three. So Wednesday, I'll teach you how to add these three. But you're going to start with showing your home, review offers, inspection, appraisal, and close. So you can add a step if you want later, but for now, just click next. They're already pre-written for you and ready to go. And just like that, you have a buyer's guide and a seller's guide. Now, if you try to click add a guide, because I've done this, it says you're only allowed two right now. So you can be swift and, and quick, but it's telling you only two for right now. But in the future, we will have multiple versions. Click next, and the last step of this app, Guide Builder. So I built my two guides. Do, do, do. And the last step is activating a smart plan. So what is a smart plan? It's automated marketing. So the current smart plan we have built for you, automatically made, is called Promote My App Smart Plan. Now you're just gonna turn it on today. I'll show you how you can tweak it after. So the first thing it does is it sends them an email instantly to say, download my new app. And that email is going to have pictures in it and a link to your app specifically. So you're just turning this app on right now, the smart plan. Don't worry about everything it can do. You're just turning it on. So think of it as this is an automatic email to your database saying, have you downloaded my new app? That's it. Step one is that. Step two would be a text message. Now, if you don't have what we call Twilio turned on, it would be an automatic text message. So an auto text message with Twilio will say, hey, this is Jay with the J team, did you see the neighbor listed the home down the street? Download my app and check it out today. That's just a tagline they wrote. You can customize this, but if you don't have Twilio turned on, then it's just a reminder for you to manually text the client the next day. So if you don't remember this, um, you can always come back and then it waits another five days or a total of five days and says text them again. So basically the layout of this is one email and two text messages. If you're not ready for those kind of things, all we're doing right now is just switching this little switch to green. You're just turning it on. We're not gonna add people yet to the smart plan. Just turn it on. It's all you need to do in this step. Click next and that's it. Your app is set up and branded to you with those buyers and seller guides built in. So it's gonna give you some ideas. You can go to social media to share some designs, which we did last week. You can create a data-driven video. We have the neighborhood videos and you can even do an advertising strategy around the app. So if you want some tips on that, I did a class last week on Facebook and how to market, and I specifically talked about the app in that one. So I'm gonna click the little X here. Now, I set up my app once. What if I wanna come back and I forgot my link to the app? I see that one come up a lot. If you come to Consumer and the Site and App Settings, you're gonna find in Consumer Site and App Settings, under URLs, Here's the link for your app. So if you ever need it again and you can't find it, I would personally just save it somewhere that I can find over and over again, because this is one of the fastest way to get it to somebody. Actually, the fastest way is just to share the app from your phone, because it will go to their phone and download on the app. But if I wanted the link, this link, because we created a web page, takes them to a web page like this. It's pre-made for you. It says download today, text this number or whatnot, here's your phone number, and here's even a video on what the app can do. 
So it, they built in enough promotion about what the app can do on this web page called the landing page, and it's automatically built for each of you. And that's what we did with the Kelly guide. So if I share this link with anybody on their phone, it's going to download the app. But if they're on their computer, it'll be a page like this saying, hey, download my app today. So that's one way to market it. And then the other thing with this is just, if you ever want to come back, you can always come back to this Kelly guide again. Now we were asking about the vanity URL. So let me show you really quick on YouTube. So if you guys haven't followed me on YouTube yet, I'll say Jay Cermak, um, vanity URL is actually the link for this one. Here we go. So this is going to be the link for that vanity URL that I created. So I'm going to copy this. Sorry, I have to click on it. Good. Yes, yes, yes. All right, share, copy link. All right, there we go there. Um, Cheryl was asking if they straightened out the Twilio bug yet. Yes, so Twilio does not text at 4 a.m. anymore. Twilio, the service, will only text between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., but I'm not saying it's perfect yet. So you might want to just stick with doing the smart plans of email and manually texting people. Because today we should be reaching out manually, but if you want to, I'm leveraging Twilio, sending it out to agents and clients. Um, and so far it's been working okay for me. So there's the video if you guys want to watch. Um, I have tons of other videos about the app and different things on the whole channel. So if you haven't been on here yet, under videos, um, I've got tons of videos. But since we're talking about the app today, under playlist, one of my videos is just on the app. So you can come here to learn more about the app, Facebook, Zillow, all these great things. So we've got hundreds of videos to support you guys. Um, the other way to get help about the app inside of command, click the question mark. So if you haven't used the question mark in command in the upper right hand corner and you come to Keller Williams University, let's say I was just typing in the app as the name. Here are all the articles on how to get started with the app, how to share your app. By the way, when I click how to share your app, this is where I learned that you have to log in <laughs> to the app in order to share it. So if you're wondering about what we just did today, the instructions step-by-step -step are right here if you didn't follow along. So if you ever need to come back, that's here. You can uh, share other things about the app and just type in the word app and there's a help article on that. So that's actually it for the app. What I would recommend is getting out there and sharing it, right? showing people that it works, learning how it works. And what you might do is create a promotion yourself about your app and say, here's something different. I'm coining it Real Estate 2.0 if you want an idea of what I'm doing, by the way. Um, I've also got my business page. Um, where is this at? No, that won't work. All right, I'll just do it through YouTube. So I've also got the J team. And the reason I'm mentioning that is, uh, here it is. So this is my actual channel, but one of the channels and videos I made is specifically around the app. So I made a video called Real Estate 2.0 is available now. If you wanna watch this video, I basically did a four minute demo showing them what the app can do. So if you wanna know how to explain it or you wanna R&D, rip off and duplicate, and how to use this app. Here's a video that I made that explains Real Estate 2.0. There's me showing the buying and selling guides built in. So if you want some ideas, you can go to that channel as well and get some content to copy and create yourself there. And I'll just share right now what I've been doing with this app is I did postcards where I mailed it to my neighbor. I have uh, used postcards, I've used Facebook ads, all kinds of great things to get this out, Facebook posts, because now's the time they need this more than ever, right? They're home, they wanna search for things, they wanna look anywhere, and my goal is to get them on this app so eventually they get off of the other apps. So hopefully you found value. Sorry that it cut out in the middle. What we're gonna do is open it up to Q&A here, but I wanted to make sure that we recorded this part of it first. Um, for those watching on Facebook, I will edit out the section that the video cut out. And right now it's just learning what can your app do. Make sure you sign into the app as a consumer, meaning you're gonna have to register for an account. Make sure the app is branded to you before you share it with anybody. And let's start sharing it. Let's start telling them that I'm your neighborhood expert. And by the way, with the market being uncertain right now, we can save you money with Keller Mortgage, Keller Covered. You guys have vendors you can recommend as well. It's all built in. 
to give them the real estate 2.0 experience of the future. So those on Facebook Live, thanks for watching. And those on the Zoom, I'm gonna stay after and answer your Q&A.